Hi there and welcome to this uh, chemistry lesson uh, in which I want to help you understand how will we name binary covalent compounds. Okay, that in itself seems already a little bit intimidating. But what do I mean by binary covalent compounds? Well, binary is talking about two, okay. Covalent is talking about the type of bond that would exist between two elements. Okay, so it is a bond between, or actually let, let's say it like this, okay. I want to show you how to name the compound of two covalent bonded bonded elements okay now these are the technical names so, so for example water is h2o we call it water okay it, we do not call it di hi hydrogen oxide okay but if we were to give it its technical name that's what it would have been dihydrogen oxide okay and this is the type of naming that I am going to show you um, how we are going to do that the first thing that you need to know is the Hill system okay the Hill system we're going to use the Hill system and it's not it, it's again sounds intimidating um, but it's not the Hill system simply says we're going to start with C okay in other words carbon will always be first if there is a carbon of course and then we will have hydrogen okay so if it's not carbon first then it's hydrogen first if, um, and after that alphabetically Alpha basically um, I think that's not wrong but that's fine okay alphabetically. okay alphabetically would be after that okay so for example as you can see here um, when I'm talking about when I wrote down the chemical formula for water I started with H because H should go first and then whatever was left whatever other compound would be in alphabetic order okay after I have that um, then obviously I will have the names of two elements okay so because we're doing the compound of two covalent bonds I'm going to have the names of the two elements so what you do next is now you know the order in which to put the names so you'll put the the name one and then you'll put name two and name two will not end in its usual so for example oxygen will not end on the oxygen it will end on an uh, on the gin it will end on an um, ide so instead of oxygen we replaced that oxygen oxygen with ide okay instead of chloride if the word was chloride um, okay chloride will be sorry chlor uh, chlorine will become chloride bromine would become bromide okay the um, suffix will change to an IDE suffix okay so that is the first part and now we're just going to have a prefix to the two names if there is more than one of the atoms in this molecule okay so this is a molecule if there is more than one atom in the molecule then it will get a suffix okay that means uh, something that comes before the name so here are the suffix uh, suffixes okay if there are two molecules we'll use the uh, the letters di di 
Okay, die will uh, mean two. If it is three, it will be tri, like tricycle. Okay, if it is four, it would be tetra. Tetra. If it is five, it would be penta, like pentagram is a five-sided penta um, uh, pentagram polygon. Uh, six hexa. And you will use this quite a lot in uh, naming elements, so it, it would be good for you to know this off by heart. Seven is hepta. Eight is octa, like an octopus has eight legs. Okay, so that one's also easy to remember. Six also a hexagram is a six-sided object. Okay, eight, nine is probably the one I remember the least, Nona. Nona and ten is Deca. Okay. And this should be sufficient. Okay, so um, ten, uh, 10 is the decimal. Uh, we use the decimal system, which is an, uh, a system of 10 digits per uh, or 10 numbers per digit. And uh, that's the decimal system, and that's 10 represents deca or is represented by deca. So if I had a compound, and now you can see why I called this di hydrogen, two hydrogens. And one oxygen but instead of oxygen I put oxide okay if I were to give you another common one that's CO2 okay that is the the type of gas that you are exhaling okay CO2 and CO2 is we write the two names carbon comes first you see we start with the C okay as was suggested by Hill okay carbon and then it must be oxide okay oxygen but we end on the ide and then the two tells me since I've got two oxygens it would be di so this is carbon dioxide okay um, what else can we take okay how about P4 O oh, ten. Okay, this one will be called phosphor. Phosphorus. Is that spelled correct? I think so. Fox phosphorus and oxide. Okay, oxide. And then since it is four phosphorus, for four we use tetra, so it's te tetra phosphorus, and then ten is deca oxide. But as you can see now, here is some funny business going on. This AO here does not pronounce very nicely. So what we would do in a situation like this where um, where uh, we have deca, okay, we would rather drop the A. So this will be in, it's good I rewrite it, tetra phosphorus decoxide decoxide and then the deck uh, communicates very clearly that we are using uh, uh, 10 oxygens. Okay, uh, let's do another one. Okay, let's take SO3. Okay, SO3 is again sulfur. Sulfur and then oxide again I should choose a different one than oxide isn't it sulfur and oxide there's one sulfur you could put mono mono sulfur oxide but the convention is not to do mono would represent one uh, so sulfur but there's three so that would be tri oxide sulfur tri oxide okay let me try one without the um, without oxygen uh, in the end okay let's take H2S okay this would be uh, let me start with well let, let's write the whole thing so that you can start uh, 
learning to read it imme immediately. I know it's hydrogen, I know it's sulfur, so it's hydrogen sulfide. But there's two hydrogens, so it must be di hi hydrogen sulfide. Not sulfur, but sulfide. We end on the IDE. Okay, so it is this very IDE that tells me I'm working with a covalent uh, bond. Okay, let's leave that there. Uh, I think that's more than enough examples for now. It's really not very difficult, especially since it's only two, uh, two elements. Uh, you, uh, if I quick, quickly go through it again, we start with the Hill system, uh, which means we start either with carbon or with hydrogen, then uh, or after that alphabetically. We write the two names, but we end on an IDE, okay, and the two names must get a suffix, something that comes in front of the name, telling us how many of, uh, of those atoms there is in the compound. And that suffix is represented by this table here that I encourage you to know off by heart. Hopefully uh, you found that as easy as it really is and uh, you are soon on your way to start naming um, covalent, binary covalent compounds. Good luck.